The Italian Grand Prix weekend saw a lot of interesting happenings, but I'm going to focus on a couple of things that became pretty important through Friday and Saturday. This video will focus on the drivers constantly trying to go beyond the white line on the outside of Parabolica, and the second video in a couple of days will look at the mess that came out of everyone trying to get a toe down the straights. Monza is the last real high-speed power circuit on the F1 calendar since the old Hockenheim ring was chopped into its current format. While there are definitely fast tracks still on the calendar, Monza is dominated by long straights, broken only by a series of chicanes and a few right-handers that seem only to exist to make sure the track gets back to where it started. It's actually kind of similar in character to La Sarthe in that regard, the circuit that runs the 24 hours of Le Mans. Imagine F1 on that monster of a track. The FIA were extremely tight on keeping cars from going wide at Parabolica through F1, F2 and F3, dishing out instant and brutal punishments for those who transgressed. Now why was that? A key part of maximising your speed down the long straights is to maximise your exit out of the previous corner. This means you want to get the car straightened up and the traction down as early as possible so you can reach maximum speed as quickly as possible. Let's imagine an acceleration curve for a Formula 1 car. Now this graph is going to be completely made up as an example, but that doesn't really matter. Now a car's speed into Parabolica is about 180 km an hour, and the top speed of an F1 car is about 340 km an hour, let's say. As the car decelerates out of Parabolica and onto the pit straight, you'll want to get your car up to that maximum 340 km an hour as quickly as possible, so it's travelling at maximum speed for the longest possible distance. Doing that means you cover the distance onto straight, in the shortest time. So if we have time going along the bottom of our chart here and speed going up the side, we can imagine the typical acceleration of an F1 car looking something like this maybe. So it gains speed quickly out of the corner and then eventually reaches maximum speed which it continues at until the braking point. But if we accelerate even faster out of the corner, the curve will look like this. Speed will be gained even quicker and we'll reach maximum speed in say 8 seconds instead of 10. So we'll reach the braking point sooner. Conversely, if you get some wheel spin or something as you start to accelerate and the car bogs down, the curve will be shallower and take longer to get to maximum speed so you'll reach the braking point later. All fairly simple, right? So why is it hugely beneficial for drivers to go wide at Parabolica and why is it so beneficial that the FA were deleting both their current and following lap time from the timing boards should they leave the track? The obvious way to cut the track is on the inside of course, you literally shorten the circuit, flatten out the turning circle and lose a little less speed, in theory. But going wide through a corner like Parabolica is all about setting yourself up for the long straight ahead of you. Consider two lines through Parabolica. The first, a classic racing line, opening the corner up by coming in wide, glancing the apex and allowing the car to drift wide to the outside of the track. This is a sensible line and probably what you would do if the next turn was a couple of hundred metres up the road but with a long high speed straight ahead, consider this approach. What if you brush the apex early, bring the car out wider and get the car close to straightened out very early on so the car has maximum traction and can start accelerating properly sooner. This coupled with the natural way the track opens out on exit means you get to hit higher speeds sooner and power down the straight in a shorter time. Consider then going further bringing the car out even wider, beyond the bounds of the track, and thus finding the sweet spot where you can get the car on the power even earlier and accelerating even harder down the straight. That's the benefit of taking liberties with the track limits of Parabolica. Of course, not only does this benefit you on your current lap, but the pitch straight is half this lap, half the next lap. So grabbing this extra bit of track will save tenths off two laps, which is why the FAA were deleting pairs of laps for such infringements. It seemed harsh at first, but it does make sense. As well as threatening deletion of times, the FIA also attempted to put down a physical deterrent, the sausage curb. These are some of the harshest curbs in F1 as they've got the steepest ramp. Hitting these curbs can break your car, coax them into a spin, or even, as we saw on Friday, launch an entire car into the air. To be honest, putting these ridiculous curbs on the outside of a 200 km an hour corner was, let's say, a risky move. And the worst possible outcome occurred with Alex Peroni jumping into the air and landing on a barrier, destroying the fencing and nearly bringing it down on a gang of marshals. Dangerous indeed. So these curbs were completely removed and not returned to the track. But it wasn't that long ago that the outside of Parabolica was one big gravel trap, with the risk for daring with the limits to bog down in the tractionless stone pits. Now in the interest of safety and Monza making itself available to serve a variety of sports, the runoff is now completely tarmacked off so drivers feel less worried about stepping outside of the boundaries. 
That's why the FIA have to closely visually monitor each car's path so intensely and penalise them for every infringement. Assuming that Tarmac is here to stay, what could be done better than this slightly odd system of just slapping penalties on anyone who steps out of line? And I do say slightly odd because other series do it all the time as a matter of course. The WEC fires out track limit penalties like Birdo fires out eggs. With a vengeance. Well, they could try and do what Silverstone does for some of its corners and add a gravel or grass strip to the outside of the corner so that straying wide penalises you, but if you completely lose it, you still have tarmac to catch your brakes and save you from heavy impact or flipping upside down. This is becoming a nice compromise and saves the stewards having to dedicate so much time to watching every single car with an eagle eye. Here's a crazy idea. Could they lay down some kind of tacky coloured surface that shows itself on the tyres? That way if a car goes all four wheels off the course, we'll catch them red-handed. Or red-wheeled, I guess. This is probably the stupidest idea I have, but it might be the most entertaining. We're a high-tech sport here in Formula 1, so why not literally have sensors in the track and cars that immediately detect if the cars go too far wide? You can then either give them a track limit penalty immediately, or, get this, drop the car to low power mode for a few seconds so they briefly lose speed and resign their laps on track instead of having their times deleted. The benefit of this is that it works in the race, as well as timed sessions. The downside is that it might not be the safest idea to have cars suddenly slowing down through a very fast corner. That's how you get hit up the rear. This would definitely need testing and maybe some kind of disco light system on the back of the car as a warning. At the moment I'm pretty in favour of this low grip grass or gravel apron around the outside of tempting corners like this. It can deal out punishment without being too dangerous and require the least intervention from the stewards. And we all prefer it when stewards don't have to intervene, let's be honest. This video is sponsored by Audible and I'm going to recommend you an audiobook right off the bat, Hello World by Hannah Fry. The reason I think you might like this audiobook is because it's a fascinating listen about the computer-aided decision making or algorithms. It's made me think a lot about the mixture of human and automated decision making in motorsport stewarding and might make you appreciate why the quote unquote stewards in the Codemasters F1 video games can sometimes struggle to come to a sensible decision. It's a fascinating look at how algorithms are taking over the world. Being able to be entertained and educated in my ear holes has been brilliant for me as I like to start my day with a long walk for my physical and mental health before sitting down for a good day of writer's block. And Audible, with its huge selection of audiobooks as well as exclusive original shows, provides just what you need for your exercise, commute or relaxation time. You can listen across a wide range of devices with one synced account. Super convenient. Go to audible.com slash chamberf1 or text chamberf1 to 500-500 and start listening with an exclusive 30-day free trial, one free audiobook of your choice, and two Audible Originals, absolutely free. Right, stay tuned this week, the next video will land in a couple of days and cover cars trying to get towed.